the dream, the dream for a shared vision, the dream for a life that we think Nancy would choose if she was making the choices herself. You know, consider people who we know will take the time to listen to Nancy, to uh, introduce her to uh, welcoming places in the community, and uh, that they'll fi try and figure out with you the kinds of things that you like and the things that you don't like and build on those positives. Um, so not just being a tourist, not just visiting places and having activities, but developing commitments, developing things that will benefit Nancy and benefit others as well. So uh, over the years, Nancy's developed a number of volunteer roles, kinds of roles that any of us could have. There's a lot of nuance to Nancy, and I think that's true of anybody. But when you're working in a way where you're you're making decisions for people, that it's really even more important to take the time to get to to actually understand the way that they communicate and to understand the subtleties about the way they communicate. So I guess that takes a bit of patience and a bit of learning and, and mostly time. I think it's mostly time. Yeah, so like with Nancy, there's often people who don't know how to interact with her, and if you shut down, then that interaction will be lost for Nancy as well as for you. So being able to kind of break those social barriers and just say hi to people. Here's Herman. Nancy knows Herman from the garden. I met when we were in our 20s and now we're in our 30s. It seems like so long ago that we met. I see her as a dedicated leader um, with the help of her family and community. Her volunteer work with Out of the Cold and TIFF and her endless gardening in the summer, she's always helping out people in need and I find that a true inspiration. I couldn't ask for a better friend. She's kind and always there for me. She's kind of an extension of my family. I just hope that I've been equally a good friend to her. Um, and when I take time to stop and reflect on how Nancy's affected my life, I think I might not be as successful as I am now if it wasn't for her. Thanks, Nancy. Um, the things that we got to do when I first started working with Nancy were, to me, amazing and groundbreaking. And here was this young woman with a whole world of possibilities and. Um, I remember the first time we went swimming, and I've never felt joy like I felt through Nancy that day. Um, if we think of Nancy in the context of her disability, then we'll never be able to get to know the person that she really is. The complexity of communicating without words. The fact that she listens unconditionally always. Um, well, not always, because if she doesn't want to hear it, she'll tell you. <laughs> Um, I remember the first time we went to a music lesson and just the fact that she was so in tune with her teacher and her sound and her music. Nancy is a lover of music. Um, she, as soon as she hears the guitar, she usually starts wanting to strum or move and sometimes will start to clap her hands as well. Um, the value of music therapy for Nancy is that it gives her an opportunity to create her own music and be a part of a music making experience. get some voice happening for Nancy and I've noticed lately that Nancy's been increasing in her in her vocalizations just spontaneously which has been really neat to see
We went to the church, the United Church, where Nancy's been serving lunch since so many years. I am learning a lot uh, from Nancy and from all those things around her and uh, Nancy's community and Nancy's family, Nancy's friends. You can feel things like happiness, like a smile, like a greeting or something like that. That's something that I am sure that Nancy likes and she appreciates and as well as people too. Like, so that's one of the things that I, that, that I would say that is, well, in, in my opinion, I think this is very important. I like to people getting to know uh, that Nancy can just go any place like anybody else and that you can share with people so many things. She's happy, right Nancy? I'm here with Nao, who is giving Nancy a massage, and Nancy comes to the clinic uh, about every three weeks to have 45 minutes of wonderful massage therapy. It's been the better part of two years now, I think, that Nancy's been coming to visit the clinic, as you say, which is, I'd say, about a 10-15 minute walk from home. And uh, yeah, I know Nancy likes getting her treatments at the clinic. Helps her feel like she's part of the community. Uh, her legs are often very, very tight. Uh, and I know you guys work on that, getting her kind of trying to be mobile on her legs and standing exercises. To see a client like Nancy, kind of opens your hands and your eyes to you know, ways that the human body really can respond. But why we're here doing massage therapy is to um, make people feel better. Um, and sometimes just holding and supporting and uh, just doing very light techniques can be as, as effective as anything else in massage therapy. Um, these students are really learning how to communicate in different ways and having someone like Nancy here really gives them the, sort of the, the gift of learning to go back to basics and to really listen to someone even if they're not able to communicate verbally where it's just about touch, it's about nurturing, seeing Nancy around the school um, over the last well, it's quite a while now. Um, I know that generally, uh, you know, the response is so good and it's really, really valu valuable. I know the students all really enjoy having the experience. She knows the way you handle her. From the time she knows you, she recognizes your voice. She knows the best way to to make sure she's comfortable when when you're supporting her. You know. Why the Toronto District School Board welcomes students with uh, uh, different learning styles to the continuing ed programs? Well, we feel at Toronto District School Board that everybody has a right to education and everybody has a right to learn. Okay. Wow. Neat. So we accept everyone from all walks of life. And what makes it successful for Nancy to participate in a class like the watercolor painting she's doing this term? Yeah, uh, I think it's so, so successful to Nancy because a lot of our clients here are very supportive of her in the classes. Like I know she's been in the African drumming. She educates other people into seeing that because even though she has disabilities, she still can partake in activities and still learn and, and enjoy the activities that are offered. I don't think a lot of people are aware of that. They can see that, you know what, everybody is the same.
I was glad to have her. I want Nancy to keep coming to Danforth. Isn't it nice to feel welcome, <laughs> Nance? <laughs> All right. Keep coming to Danforth. We have a sense that others care about Nancy. And if we were not, and when we are not, in this world, it won't just be her brothers who she will have to rely on, or hopefully just paid staff who are key in her life, support staff, formal supports, but the people who come to her network, the informal supports, the genuine relationships, it, it gives her brothers a sense that there are others who, who care about her and want her to have a good life. They're trying to see how you can be a citizen, how you can contribute and participate and have a full and varied life as any of us would choose for ourselves. We value and love Nancy and we think that that's an important message that everyone should hear.